All right, so now we're here. We're gonna go ahead and want to set the player's origin location. So we're gonna say data.player to get location. And now we have the origin. And so now we're gonna to want to go ahead and do is uh, get a bunch of locations. So we're gonna say um, list custom location, uh, past location equals data dot get oh, data dot entity past locations dot get estimated location. Now here we're gonna want to go ahead and put in the data dot ping, and then we're gonna add a delta of uh, one hundred and fifty. Uh, which basically what it'll do is it'll um, get the location of on the, with a timestamp of this ping and then it'll get multiple locations within a range and that's what it'll be doing. Um, the reason we want to do this is because um, just to allow for redundancy to make sure we always get a location that would most likely be correct. Okay, so then now that we have this, we're going to want to go ahead and um, do map. So we're going to stream dot map. And then we're going to say lock, and then we're going to say lock dot two vector, and then we're going to say collect collectors dot two list, and this will collect it all into the list, and so this will change to vector. Oh, vector. Okay, and then of course we can make that smaller. All right. So then now that we have that, what you're going to want to go ahead and do is do pass location, and we're going to set this as uh, float, and we're going to set or double. And we're going to say distance equals past location dot stream dot we're going to say map to double. We're going to say vec vec dot distance. We're going to say vec dot distance origin dot two vector minus three one point three. We're going to say min and then we're going to say or oh, else zero. Um and then. What we're going to want to go ahead and do is actually do this a little bit differently. Instead, we're going to say um, vec dot clone dot set y zero, and then we're going to say dot clone dot set y zero. So we're not measuring vertical distance. Okay. And now that we have that, we're going to say if distance is greater than three point five f, and then we're going to add a verbose. So we're going to we have our reach verbose in our player data. We're going to say if data dot reach threshold plus plus is greater than ten, we're going to flag it. So we're going to say flag uh, data dot player, and we're going to say distance equals the distance. And just so we get a more rounded number, we're going to change that to a float. Okay. And then here we're going to go ahead and do data dot reach threshold minus equals data dot reach threshold is greater than zero. And we're going to subtract it by one by doing that. Okay. So we'll broadcast and we'll show you this. So we'll say distance equals distance and threshold equals um, data dot reach threshold. So before we actually go on the test server, you want to uh, set data to last entity to um, entity because, um, ooh, sorry, uh, living entity entity. So yeah, then we'll uh, see you on the test server. Okay, so now it's working. So as you can see here, uh, the reach doesn't actually go much above um, 3.1. It's actually quite legitimate. So as you can see here, so we're actually going to change the threshold really quickly. So we're going to change this to 3.1 because this would actually be pretty decent. All right, now we're here. More spreads on. Let's go ahead and use some reach. As you can see, we're being detected for reach. So we'll go ahead and turn off. But like, as you can see, we're not going above 3.1 all too often. So yeah, let's use a lower bit of reach. So let's say 3. Three to 3.5. So we're going to come ahead and continue. And then, yeah, we almost flagged there. So yeah, there we go. We have that. And then let's use lower 3.2 to 3.4. And as you can see, we're going to continue to flag for that. You might be able to lower the verbose if you do some more, but this is where it's going to be safe. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and as always, stay funky, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.